Jen Psaki and her fat tits decided to call it a career at the podium of truth, and now they're shuffling along this little troll doll looking thing. Karine Jean Pierre. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to put some respect on her name. She's the first, the black queer gimmick that's up there holding this high position of power nonsense or whatever so you can't criticize any anything that she says because it's misogyny or racism or i don't know dwarfism i don't fucking know but anyways according to her though if you're not white male straight or wealthy there's a target on your back cool as she says as the mouthpiece of president of the united states and the white house and the uh, biden administration at large all right then president joe biden's new press secretary corinne jean pierre has a history of calling out america's racism throughout her career in politics and activism i'm sure she's doing a great job of unbiasedly and uh, really assessing all the issues of both sides really when it comes to america's racism throughout history all right uh, I, 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 enough i just think that america has a really big problem with race yes yeah the fact that you just can't let it go you can't let it go and it's very real if you just if i just keep saying these things eventually they'll become true and we have yet to deal with it yeah because you keep bringing it up coincidentally every about four years or so uh he i, I think it's a she though uh she said in a pbs interview with bonnie irby in 2019 after former president donald trump won in 2016 her like everybody else spurred out about it wrote her memoirs and spoke about the problem of racism in america during her book tour would she still had the same problem if hillary clinton managed to do her thing would there still be a racism problem because hillary's husband the first and uh, the self-proclaimed america's first black president she'd still be worried about the, uh, the racism or whatever fucking cause de jour is not being able to scissor with jen i don't fucking know i always say ugh, something stupid i hope if you're not white oh yes it is uh male straight or wealthy you're under attack i mean there's a target on your back oh oh well then of course because there's there's just so many black people out there hanging from trees in 2022 what an adult before working for biden jean pierre embraced the more activist side of politics by taking a job at moveon.org i wish she would take that advice after a history of working with some of america's most famous democrats <laughs> never fails always fucking happens she worked with these scandal ridden political figures such as uh, oh yeah senator john edwards and uh, representative anthony weiner you can't make this up. Are you fucking serious? As well as Democrat champions like President Barack Obama. Ugh. Uh, the daughter of Haitian immigrants, Jean-Pierre, was raised in New York City, is currently living in Washington, D.C. area in a domestic partnership with CNN's Susan uh, Malvio whatever i don't know who she is and she works for cnn so nobody else does but she's still oh but she said she still experienced racism despite working in america's most liberal cities maybe that's a condemnation of liberals um, maybe she's just trying to be you know backhandedly based with her comments i doubt it though i think that when you're a person of color when you're a black woman you experience it every day yeah stop hanging around with democrats the world's probably a much better place if you don't uh she said after irby asked her about experiencing racial prejudice in america i bet she's probably fine with um that same prejudice working out for her because yeah she's a wholeheartedly underqualified to take over as press secretary but yet here she is she checks the right boxes if she would have been just a little quicker on the draw, she might have been nominated for the Supreme Court. Who knows? She fits all the bills and checks off an additional box as well. Well, she'd rather rub on it. Uh, it's as simple as walking into a store and people look at you and wonder, do you belong in the store? Well, to be honest, they'd have to look down because you're not very tall. And um, I think people have seen black people before. Okay, this isn't like walking into a fucking secluded island where they're just uh, they're trying to rub your arm to see if anything would come off like what are, what are you talking about here i'm just talking about things that i've seen before fantasized that uh, would eventually happen so i could just cry racism in the store it's never fucking happening you stupid i will guarantee it it happens every every day i'm sure it does 
She said she did not want to blame Trump for racism, but it's just so easy and everybody else is doing it. So I just figured I might as well hop on the bandwagon, right? Noting it had existed in the country for a long time, but said Americans appear more comfortable about being openly racist. It's not Trump's problem, but he enabled more racism to come out because you remember all of those racist attacks that happened between 2016 and 2021 when he left. Like... What exactly? Can't quite remember. In the purview of the of the people who would support Trump, I don't recall any of them. But on the other side, though, oh boy, howdy! Maybe again, it, it, she surrounded herself with liberals who would just never give up on those topics. Maybe that's what she's referencing again. Maybe she'll elaborate a little bit more. What he has done is made it blatantly. Uh, people are just overt about it in a way that we have never seen before. Imagine saying so much, but getting to the heart of so very little. She spoke of Republicans running for office after Trump, uh, who said, Oh, we're openly racist. Oh, cool, just calling people racist. I wish that was something that came with a harsher punishment. You can't just levy these accusations and not face the consequences of it. Anyways, we saw candidates in the last election who were proud to be white supremacists. Who exactly? White nationalists talking about purging that we need white power, white America. I mean, that is what we're hearing from some of the candidates, and they were in the Republican Party. Uh, she noted the Republican Party denounced those candidates, but indicated that it was Trump who made them more comfortable. What are you talking about? Saw them across the country, and we had never seen that before, or hadn't seen it in a very long time, she said, comparing it to the Jim Crow era of the past. Cool. I wonder what her hot takes about the new Jim Crow when it comes to Joe Biden's multi-tiered society. When it comes to vaccines, I'm sure she's probably fine with that. During a book event with MSNBC's Joy Reid, ugh, Jean-Pierre urged an old white male asking about how to get involved uh, to join moveon.org to become an ally for minorities. Why, if they're perfectly capable and um, able to take on those roles, why do they always need so much help? I don't really get it. Uh, she asked him to read the book, How to Be Anti-Racist. Oh, yes, uh, cool. Teach a book to just, you know, condemn yourself for being, you know, uh, possessing several immutable characteristics. You're, you're just bad because of your birth. <laughs> cool a book that argues the existence of systemic racism in america and demands people do more about it is just oh then just not be racist cool because remember kids the the call of this current white house is if you're white you're bad unless you're joe then it's just kind of okay nobody really talks about it we need more people like you who look like you to really get into it with us what that don't make no sense she thanked him for coming to the book event noting that it was evident that he wanted to get involved exactly is she gonna go on to say we really need to have these important conversations and then whenever somebody wants to have these important conversations no you're a racism I think there's a question to how to get more people to come out when you're not a person of color, right? Who's not a woman, right? Yeah, exactly. Just put up all of these false qualifiers before you can have a conversation, right? Just poison the well to the point where nobody wants to talk and then wonder why nobody wants to talk. She called out the per current political climate and all these horrible isms that Trump had appeal to during the 2016 election. Like what exactly? Like what? Racism, bigotry, homophobia, xenophobia, mis agony and it has existed before way before trump got here but you know he, he profited from them can you point to any single one of them because we could run through that entire list again and we'd have multiple different statements and videos and speeches that were delivered by the person on the other side of the aisle or may hey maybe even the, the prior descendants from the democratic party like said robert bird who was what what level of the clan by the way the last member to serve in the united states Congress is to actually have a fucking hood in his closet, but no, 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 it's the other side of the aisle who were all of the isms and obes. Right. Uh, he touched on something that was there. There was very painful and gave it a whole new life in a very public way. She urged everyone at the event to get involved in the 2020 election, warning that if Trump was reelected, it would be the end of the country. Yeah, she's known for her very measured takes, I guess, and you can look forward to that more with her new role as press secretary. 
But this is just kind of a parting shot for any of the speds out there that don't think that uh, Trump should run in 2024. You're wrong. You're you're super wrong for a multitude of reasons. Just look at the fact that every one of his endorsements continue to go fucking undefeated in primaries. I, I, I'm not too sure if any of have panned out this week, but recently they've got, well, the ones in Texas went like 55 and 0, and then the ones uh, last weekend went uh, 22 and 0, so it's pretty much undefeated and uh, the whole mega movement is uh yeah that's that's the direction for the republican party it's uh, indisputable at this point to see how it bores out uh, in the midterms i suppose but look at her phraseology here uh, all of this shit all, all the bad shit in the world existed way before trump so if you think that it should be desantis in 2024 or nikki haley ben shapiro you fucking trad con cuck if you think that, oh, they're just as good, they just don't come with any of the baggage of Trump, they will just immediately get tarred and feathered and painted with the same fucking brush that they use to just turn Donald Trump, who, remember, was a Democrat for a very long time, was born and raised, uh, born and raised, <laughs> tried to fuse those words together, born and raised the New York fucking city, you know, haven of republicanism. The man who was in the lyrics of many a fucking rap song not that long ago, all of a sudden got turned into, the, I don't know, the human embodiment of racism, bigotry, homophobia, xenophobia, misogyny. I like that mispronunciation. Go fuck off. He got turned into all of that overnight, and you'd think that that wouldn't happen to Ron DeSantis like that? Come on now. Let's not fucking kid ourselves at this point. But kid ourselves is exactly what the press secretary just did, because, oh, isn't she just so precious she should probably keep kamala around her at all times because yeah no she's a much more appealing option i don't think i've ever seen a picture of kamala smiling where she uh, ever really looks you know the human let's be honest with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone